there's our mirror, it's been washed out, it's dried off, it's clean, and we're ready to go to the next step, which is moving it out of the casting room into the polishing room, and we polish the back flat. And the technology of our polisher is very, very important. And if you look here, we have a four-foot disc of aluminum, one inch thick, with 18 of these hydraulic actuators on top. And each actuator is hooked up to a bunch of cables which go over pivot points into the aluminum plate. Now, we have a steeply pitched parabolic surface where the curvature changes. And what we invented here at the Mirror Lab is that as this moves across different surfaces, uh, the polishing computer sends a signal to the actuators a hundred times a second, and we get a hydraulic motion ten times a second. <coughs> and this changes its shape in real time as it's moving across the surface so that at any time, wherever it is, it's exactly the right shape. The other thing which is going on simultaneously is when we put uh, a mirror under the test tower, the test computer tracks all 1,750 of those geometric shapes, and it's telling the polisher, press down on the high spots, ignore the low spots. So in real time, you're having this thing go up and down while it's changing its morphology at 10 times a second. The other thing, we're doing many things simultaneously, is in the past 12 months, we changed our polishing technology and our grinding technology. We used to use uh, eight different grades of cerium <coughs> oxide. We now take pads, sticky back, which glue onto the surface of these uh, hard polyurethane pads. And these start out 30 micron diamonds impregnated in polyurethane. And everybody looks to see if they can see the diamonds. <laughs> Too small. So we start out 30, then go 10, then go 5. And what accuracy do you achieve in the surface? Is it 10 nanometers? Uh, not quite 10. On a big one, 18. On a small one, the 21 footer is 14. <laughs> So this, the technology of the uh, lap polisher is crucial to the mirror lens. And we also, when we get to it, we've also changed our grinding technology. And this first is thing we This is the back of the mirror, eh? Right. We just are going to polish that flat and we're going to attach about 175 load spreaders, which will spread stress across the mirror, and each of the load spreaders is hooked up to a hydraulic actuator, because if you're working and the wind is blowing from the wrong direction, the mirror starts bending the wrong way, so these hydraulic actuators push back. And since these are going to South America, uh, we provide earthquake protection, about a 4G shot all at once. But the back has to be flat. By the way, spinning, the spin process gets us to within uh, three millimeters of our final curvature. And here we're attaching load spreaders, and these have to be placed exactly correctly because we're going to then flip the mirror over and lay it down on top of a polishing support cell where everything has to line up to a fraction of a millimeter. So 
we have one of our distance measuring little robots tells us, yes, this is exactly because it's a permanent bond. There's the back of the mirror, and then we're going to pick that up with the glue, and then there's our support cell. And it'll be on top of that support cell, thank you, for about two and a half years, three years. And there's our new cutter. We used to use a large disc with loose abrasive. This is a 12-inch wheel spinning 1,100 RPM. And around the circumference are diamond teeth. And the front surface generator gets us to within a thousandth of an inch. And it's, it's taking off around 200 microns of glass per pass. And this is a micro view of what the surface looks like. On the next pass, of course, a little bit of that. And then we start polishing and on the next slide, you'll see there are 88 of these surfaces right over here. And that's doing the polishing. When we use one uh, cerium oxide polish right before the very end. And then our last polish is Jeweler's Rouge to give it that super high gloss. It's not an oxide, right? Ferrous. Yeah. And this is looking down. It happens to be the LSST mirror. We then clean it off. <laughs> There's no technology. We use the appropriate technology. We're going to move it under the test tower because we think we're done. And then we debate with whoever the mirror is for. Did we do it correctly? Here's one of our instruments that's a laser scanner. On the Giant Magellan, we have four different instruments, and each one operates on a different principle of optics, and they all have to give the same answer. We have three optic bridges with pre-calibrated equipment on them, and when we get outside, we'll go over that a little more. This is looking down from one of the bridge levels to a mirror, and you can see the geometry. Now, this is really low tech. We put down plastic film when it's all done to keep dirt and scratches off the mirror. This will eventually be peeled away. And you can see our ultra high tech applicant <laughs> <all> over there. <laughs> and what we're going to do next is since the mirror is done, we're going to pick it up with a vacuum frame. And mind you, this specific mirror weighs 54,000 pounds, <coughs> or roughly 27 metric tons. And we're going to pick it up with a vacuum and move it over from the support cell to the bottom half of the packing. Each of these is two feet in diameter, uh, 60 centimeters. I'm going to energize. There are 36 feet. There's our support cell. There's the mirror. We're going to pick, and here's the gift box. So again, we have time lapse. We move it over. Lock it onto the box. There's the outside of the carton, 35 feet by 35 feet by 55 tons. And in the middle of the night, so we do not bring the entire city to a halt, and you can see how we're screaming out of the parking lot at about a half a mile an hour. And this is going to go to either Houston, Texas, or Long Beach. 
picked up, put aboard ship, and then go down to South America. Sure. Sure. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Impressive.